So very good afternoon to one and all. And it's a moment of immense pleasure that the college is organizing a five-day faculty development program on the use of tools and techniques in multidisciplinary research. In fact, we are living in the era of research. And gone are those days when we, in fact, do only the fundamental research. The fundamental research is equally important. But as we move ahead in the coming decades, then this fundamental research took into concept of the interdisciplinary research. And the interdisciplinary research, in fact, it started as we say in the 18th, uh, the eighth decade of the 20th century. And then we entered into the multidisciplinary research in the last decade of the 20th century or the beginning of the first century. 21st century saw this particular change. And we need a proper diversification of the work, the fundamental work which had taken place, the fundamental work which was laid down in the earlies of the 19th or the 20th century or way back, how we are able to, going to apply it in the various fields that we have to see. So this multidisciplinary research does not take into account the only aspect of a specific domain. A, people, a person who's working in the area of science to take help in the area of technology or in social sciences. It's a very diversified zone and you must be very much confined or we must be having a broader knowledge of all these areas. We are not going to stop in that particular zone. Now, this, first of all, we try to understand that what research is. Basically, research is a process of systematic inquiry. When we perform research, then this research needs something which has to be addressed. What is research, in fact? The first thing is that 
you have to understand the domain on what domain you're working. And for that domain, for that specific task, what you're going to perform, you must have entire knowledge of the collection of the data. The collection of data is not only a solution. The collection of data, how you are going to collect the data is very important. The scientific collection of data is important. And this scientific collection of data, it varies from discipline to discipline. If you come to the social sciences, then the collection of those data needs some questionnaire. If you move to the field of management or commerce, or if you move into the new development of a specific product, then it needs certain survey. So that collection of data again is uh, the scientific logical way of collecting it. Then when you have started collecting the data or when the data is collected, then simultaneously also you have to document those information. The critical information has to be documented. The critical information has to be documented. And then what in fact, when the document you are going to collect or what the information, what you are going to, the information, what you are going to document it, it must be in very scientific and a logical way. And then based on those data, what you have collected and based on the information that you have collected, then comes the portion of the analysis of those data. How you are going to analyze those data? How you are going to interpret those data? After you have analyzed those data, then the basic question arises that how you are going to interpret those data or information. And for interpretation or analysis of those data, you need certain methodologies. So those methodology changes. If you're a student of humanities, then the methodology of analyzing those data again becomes important. That what way you are going to analyze this data. When you are moving in the domain of technology and science, then analyzing those data has a different methodology. So methodology changes as per the information, as per the data what you have collected, and as per the domain what you are doing onto that. And those methodologies are being performed by the researchers of the different people. I will be exploring those ideas in a different way. So research basically is collect the, they are the main, there is a systematic inquiry that collects the data, that documents the critical information, processes those data, and after analysis and interpretation of those data, you are adopting certain research methodologies by the experts of that domain to come out some with fruitful output and this all processing what you have done is nothing but it is research. So research does not mean that only you are going to put up certain innovative ideas. When you are going to put up those innovative ideas, then the ideas what you have given that needs certain justification. And when you are going to give those justification, then those justification need a proper documentation. So it is a logical way, step by step way of performing this activity. So research is in fact that. And when we come to uh, the other aspect of uh, is a just of your mics. Many of them are with their mics on. So they are requested that kindly switch off their mics. Please mute your mics because uh, uh, it needs a lot of uh, this uh, in, there's a chaos or a lot of sound is coming. 
therefore i request you to kindly mute all of you kindly mute it please mute everybody is requested to mute all those uh, yeah still somebody has a lot of sound is coming so please just mute it everybody is requested to kindly mute it and mr elvin backs bakla please mute it and many more yeah now everybody is fine because lot of sound was coming so when we speak about this research so as i told you about research then comes the concept of multidisciplinary research so we have to understand basic thing about multidisciplinary research multidisciplinary research in fact takes into account as the name is suggesting that different disciplines comes together to come out with some fruitful solution of what it is and this multidisciplinary this multidisciplinary approach of the different domains maybe science with technology maybe uh social sciences with humanities maybe technology with uh, uh this uh, particular thing uh with uh, the medical technology and the physical technology and what in fact are the other aspects that we have to see so first of all what is multidisciplinary research that has to be taken into consideration so i define multidisciplinary research in this term i hope that the slide you are able to see it properly so multidisciplinary research when we speak about it is a research techniques in which tools from different sciences and disciplines are used to find an explanation for the question being studied i will give you certain example for it in the coming slides so when different disciplines comes together maybe that technology comes with science maybe social sciences come with physical sciences maybe social sciences come with humanities maybe the commerce or management comes with together with technology so what we speak about that it is a research technique in which tools from different sciences and discipline are used to find an explanation for the question i have taken a particular problem and that problem has to be solved out and that problem needs lot of cooperation lot of investigation and that investigation is not from a specific domain i have to collaborate with people working in different streams or in different disciplines so it is not only a basically the word pronounces multidisciplinary seems to be simple but it has a great challenge challenge of team work challenge of making the different scientists coming together and work on it so this cooperative and coordinated research requires the unified effort of experts from different disciplines they all what they do suppose that a humanity people is in connected with social science scientist or with the technologist and all three are sitting together to solve a specific problem so there is a team work between the three researchers working in three different domains they collaborate together with solving a common problem the methodologies may be different a humanity people have a different methodology for the data what he has collected for the data what he is going to process a social scientist is a different approach and a technologist may be a medical technologist or may be an engineering personal he has a different technology so different methodologies are being pulled together with the team work and to solve a particular problem that is multidisciplinary research i give an example of 
multidisciplinary nature of environmental studies. Now, if you see the multidisciplinary nature of the environmental studies, you may see uh, your notes also. You please see the notes. Then the multidisciplinary nature of the environmental studies. Environmental study, as the subject appears, it is just not a very simple way of solving a problem. Suppose we have a problem of environmental pollution. Now, when we speak about environmental pollution, it takes into account certain aspects. Noise pollution may be there. Water pollution may be there. Or different solid waste pollution may be there. Or when we go to the upper portion of the atmosphere, then it has another type of pollution. So the scientists want to eradicate the pollution, what is there. So when we are going to address the solution of the environmental pollution, then what is going to happen? So what streams are involved? The streams involved are basic and applied sciences. The first thing. And in the environmental studies, if you're going to see the basic and applied sciences, that means, suppose you're working on the environmental pollution, for example, noise pollution or water pollution, then when we speak about water pollution, then there are the creatures, maybe the animals or the different type of the species are there in water, river, world surface. So biology comes into picture. There may be the uh, biolog microbiological uh, type of species available. So when we speak about this water pollution, then there is a mixture of what? Life science, the biological world. What is there in that specific zone, the river or the sea or the pond where we are studying? The living organism there. So we need to study that what is their life history and if the water gets polluted, then what type of biological, what type of feelings or what type of distraction is going on in the life of that particular thing. So biologists are needed for that water pollution. Very same sign, not only biological, but when the water pollution is there, we have to measure the level of the pollution. The level of the pollution. Is it acidic in nature? Is it alkaline in nature? Therefore, physics comes into picture. Chemistry comes into picture. Then, when I'm speaking about the water pollution, the very same time when we come to noise pollution, then again, there are certain creatures which are there in the specific environmental domain, maybe on Earth or maybe in the sky. So, biology is there. The physics study the what type of, what level of the noise should be there so that it exceeds the pollution level. So physical sciences are involved in. The biological sciences are speaking about the habitat or the living nature of those species there. What is the changes what is going on in the living organism, whether they are on the earth or in the sky or in fact in the water. So there is some change going on there. But when we speak about the other aspect, that what is the level of the pollution, then this physics comes into picture. Chemistry comes into picture. Physical science. So biological science and physical science. Then what we do, we have collected the information that this much, this particular domain, as specific when you speak about a specific, for example, if we take River Ganga as a particular area, which is polluted, and we want to clear that particular the pollution level of river canyons. Then we start tracing out right from Lakshman Jula and on. The Rishikesh Dome, Rishikesh Hatwar, and Banaras going coming on to West Bengal. So this is the area. So what is the change in the habitat of the living creatures in that specific river? 
there is biological change. Then comes the physics and chemistry there, and also the atmosphere changes due to that particular era, what it is going on. So that is going on. So physics, physical science, chemistry, and their biological science. Then the collection, the collection of the data, what we get it from both sciences, the physical science and the biological science, the information what we have collected, we try to develop a model. That these are the information, these are the parameters, those parameters are influencing a lot for making that particular domain totally, in fact, polluted. Based on those critical parameters, based on the data what we have collected, based on the information what we have found out, we try to develop model. So what we see, mathematics comes into picture. So biology, physics, chemistry, then mathematics come into picture. When we have modeled those particular parameters, the critical parameters, which are playing an important role for making the pollution, environmental pollution, we develop the mathematical model. And based on the mathematical model, now those parameters are critically analyzed. See the word, analysis of those things, interpretation of those data. Are you going to analyze it? So those parameters are being, the real data is being fed, fed up with those mathematical model. And then based on those particular parameter result, it is being simulated. We give the values of those parameters. Mathematics give the value of those parameters and then the process of simulation. As soon as we enter into simulation, it enters into the computer science. So what do you see? Geology, botany, chemistry, physics, mathematics, analysis of the data, statistics, then simulation, the data what is being simulated is what happening. It is now we are putting the different values of the parameter. It is being simulated. If the data is large enough, then again, big data concept is taken into concept. So computer science comes in. What you see, environmental pollution. I speak about pollution. People think that the government is there and the government will take out a solution for that. Very simple. Ye sarkar ki samasya hai, sarkar usko aayega, aur ye pariyavaran mein jo dushan, dushit pariyavaran hai, usko tick kar dega. Ye chhoti si baat nahi hai. Vahaan par biology hai, geology baat nahi. Vahaan physics or chemistry hai. Aapne data ko inform ki, formation data collect kiya, us data ko mathematical model banaya, us data ka aapne analysis kiya, statistical analysis kiya, aur phir computer science usko simulate kiya. You see what? Multidisciplinary approach is coming into picture. But not the stoppage is not only there. Economics is there. If it is polluted, agar koi chi jahan par pollution ho gai, pradushan ho gaya. Ab jahan pradushan ho gaya, wahan ki artha vyavastha kya kati. The economics plays an important role. What happens? People start flying. Jahan, wherever there is an environmental pollution, the highest level, then the economic analysis is important. What is the impact of that pollution in economics? When the people are playing, the revenue goes up. So again, economics is there. Why the pollution is so much? Again, a big question. When the pollution is so much, it is due to the social behavior of the person who are living in that area. So sociology comes into picture. So we started with geology. Botany, chemistry, physics, mathematics, statistics, computer science, economics, and coming to sociology. What is the social behavior of those persons who stay in that area? We have to understand the psychology, the social behavior of that person. That what is the social behavior of the person who are residing in that particular zone? We have to collect it. When we speak about that, that this is the social behavior. This is a city which is highly polluted. The economics is going down by down. The revenue is going down by down. We have to take certain stagnant action. We are analyzing that. And when stagnant action has to be taken, then law comes into picture. Law education. 
So law education, the law is again there. Now, can you imagine that what law has to do with environmental pollution? Because unless you put a stringent law that you cannot, that naliya agar bearing hai, hai, to naliya nadi mein nahi jani chahiye. Pradushan agar ho raha hai, to uske dhuwe, jo chimni se dhuwe nikal rahe, waha filter lagaye, jisse ki pradushan jitni jada hai, usko kam ki jaye. Agar karte hai, to aapko ye sajaan milegi. The law education. What is what is going on? You have collected the data, information you have collected, analyzed the data, and then accordingly you have understood that on this basis we have to take this into account. Now this is highly pollution. Now this has to be spread out to different area. That ye area bahut pradushit ho gaya hai. In karano se ye aaya hai. So mass and media is playing with it. So what you have done, आपने जो काम किया उसको लोगों के पास पहुंचाना है तो मास एंड मीडिया कम्युनिकेशन टू जर्नलिज्म दिस हैज टू कम इनटू पिक्चर एंड व्हेन दिस इज देयर माउथ से हम ये बातें कर रहे हैं बात नहीं सुन रही है तो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मीडिया प्रिंट मीडिया सोशल मीडिया ऑल दिस मास एंड मीडिया कम्युनिकेशन हैज टू बी स्प्रेड आउट स्टार्टेड विद अगेन जूलॉजी बॉटनी केमिस्ट्री फिजिक्स मैथमेटिक्स कंप्यूटर साइंस came to economics sociology law education management mass media communication and what is the solution hum to bol diya ye cheez bahut galat ho raha hai yahan nahi honi chahiye ye niyam hona chahiye karna kya hai this is a basic question what you will do you have to take certain steps steps what that you construct this type of bridges you construct this type of new technology chimneys you construct different type of uh, the other aspects that is technology has to be taken into so we started with biological sciences life sciences came to physical sciences came to mathematical sciences then we entered sociology law mass media communication then we entered into the tech and this whole comes out with a solution for environment This is multiplication. So it is not a simple thing. So if you're an expert in physics and say that I'm going to control this pollution on my own, no, you cannot do it. We have to take help of the biologists. You have to take help with the mathematician. You have to understand the social behavior of the person. You have to take help with the sociologist. What is the economics interpretation? They have to take the help of the economist. What technology should I need of? You take help with the civil engineers. So this whole cooperation, the team management, will lead to a solution for controlling the environmental pollution, and that what needs the technology merging together with different type of pillars, and that in fact is the multidisciplinary. This is multidisciplinary. So you cannot. you only that i am doing this and i am going to solve the real problem real problem whatsoever exist is complex in nature and for this complex nature of the real problem you need different scientists when i speak scientists i mean to say different researchers of different domain coming together to come out with a solution for this specific problem that is one example i come to the another example <coughs> and the other example is now you will see your lecture notes then This is the emotional dysregulation of adolescent decision. Now, when a child is developing and come to an adolescent stage, ये उम्र जो होती है, इसमें बहुत तरह के emotional dysregulation जब बच्चा युवा अवस्था में घुस रहा है. and how to solve out that problem bahut tarah ki samasyaen jo 
बाल्यावस्था से युवा अवस्था में जब वो बच्चा जाता है और उसके अंदर अगर कोई इमोशनल डिसरेगुलेशन है तो उसकी इम्पैक्ट क्या पड़ेगा और उसकी सोल्यूशन कैसे लोग डॉक्टर के पास चले जाते हैं डॉक्टर दो दवा लिख दिया भाई ये बच्चा थोड़ा सा आ, कुछ दूसरे तरफ उसकी सोच है पढ़ाई पर कम ध्यान दे रहा है या उसके अंदर बहुत फीलिंग्स है इमोशंस बहुत है जो नॉर्मल से अधिक है या कम है तो उसकी सोल्यूशन कैसे बचाए अब केवल एक मेडिकल प्रैक्टिशनर इज नॉट गोइंग टू गिव यू दोल्यूशन तो डॉक्टर के पास चले गए दवा लिख दी इलाज हो गया और क्या उसका ये परमानेंट सोल्यूशन है तो वो भी नहीं क्यों जो हमारा मूड का डिसऑर्डर होता है जो मूड की डिसऑर्डर है या फिर उसके अंदर एंजाइटी हो सकता है या डिप्रेशन का शिकार हो सकता है तो अगर वो मूड डिसऑर्डर में एंजाइटी और डिप्रेशन है तो उसकी कॉग्निटिव अप्रोच को हम लोग कैसे वैल्यूएट करते हैं और उसमें क्या क्या मल्टीडिसिप्लिनरी अप्रोच लग सकते हैं तो अगर किसी के अंदर डिप्रेशन आ गया या कोई एंजाइटी का शिकार हो गया तब वो कुछ भी कर सकता है वो नॉर्मल जो युवा है उस नॉर्मल युवा के से अलग है उसकी सोच अलग है वो एक अलग दिशा की ओर जा सकता है और उसके अंदर रिस्क की भावना पड़े वो कुछ भी कर सकता है तो उसकी रिस्क एंड अनसर्टेनिटी की क्या वैल्यूज होंगे वो कैलकुलेट करनी है उसकी वैल्यूएट करनी है कि कोई भी अनिश्चित काम या कोई रिस्क वहां डिसीजन मेकिंग डिसीजन साइंस प्ले कर रिस्क एंड अनसर्टेनिटी इवेल्युएशन की साथ में वो जिस परिवेश में रह रहा है परिवार का परिवेश या उस सोसाइटी जहां पर रह रहा है उसका क्या उस पर इम्पैक्ट पाया रहा है तो दैट मीन सोशियोलॉजिकल इम्पैक्ट को भी स्टडी कर रहा है हमने उसके रिस्क को उसके अनसर्टेनिटी को क्योंकि डिसीजन लेने में वो दूसरे तरह का डिसीजन ले सकता है और डिसीजन साइंस जो है वो इवेल्युएट करता है उसके रिस्क और अनसर्टेनिटी के प्रोबेबिलिटी एक तो डिसीजन साइंस में दूसरा जब व्हेन ही स्टडी व्हेन ही इज एट अ स्पेसिफिक सोशियोलॉजिकल स्टेटस देन व्हाट इज द सोशियो बिहेवियर द सोसाइटी वेयर ही इज स्टडीइंग और द सोसाइटी वेयर ही इज लिविंग देन यू ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट इन दैट पर्टिकुलर सोसाइटी व्हाट टाइप ऑफ डिसीजन मैटर आर बी टेकन इनटू अकाउंट The third thing is that you go to a medical practitioner, you go to a neurophysician, and neurophysician is what they are neuroimaging techniques. आपको जाता है वो सीधा डॉक्टर जो है वो बोलते हैं कि इसका neuroimaging करना है. तो doctors के पास आपको जाने हैं. तो पहले कौन-कौन से risk को evaluate किया है, uncertainty को evaluate कीजिए, उसके social behavioural साइंसेस को स्टडी कीजिए और उसके बाद मेडिकल प्रैक्टिशनर्स उसके न्यूरो इमेजिन इमेजिनिंग जो होती है उसकी टेक्निक्स को यूज करके उसके ब्रेन को स्टडी करके और तब वो दवा को लिखता है तो आपने क्या देखा आपने डिसीजन साइंस को देखा जहां पर स्टैटिस्टिक्स का यूज हो रहा हम इवेल्युएट कर रहे हैं रिस्क और अनसर्टेनिटी आप उसके सोशल एंड बिहेवियर एस्पेक्ट को स्टडी कर रहे हैं मतलब उसकी साइकोलॉजी को और उसकी सोशियोलॉजी को स्टडी कर रहे हैं आप न्यूरो इमेजिंग टेक्निक्स यूज कर रहे हैं मतलब मेडिकल साइंस यूज कर रहे हैं तो जब हम इमोशनल डिसरेगुलेशन एडोलसेंट की चर्चा करते हैं तो केवल ये मेडिकल प्रैक्टिशनर की बात है मेडिकल टेक्नोलॉजी एक चीज सोशल बिहेवियर सोशल साइंस से दूसरी चीज थर्ड द साइकोलॉजिकल स्टेटस फोर द क्वांटिटेटिव आपको द स्टैटिस्टिकल एनालिसिस ऑफ दिस so these were the club then you come out with a solution to find out the reason for the mood disorder or anxiety or depression so that is where we go into this multidisciplinary approach so again ek chhota jo maine kaha ki jab yuva avastha mein pahunch raha kuch uski anxiety hoti hai depression hota 
that is not the problem of the medical practitioner. Only if you need a problem, if you need a particular solution for this complex problem, then you have to get in touch with all these scientists together to come out with a fruitful output. That output is my So what happens now? When you go to the statistical analysis of giving the input to the uncertainty and the risk, then the collection of data is different. And when you come to the social behavioral approach, society society then you again start collecting the data as far as the sociological aspect is concerned and the collection of data, analyzing the data in that aspect is again different. The statistical collection of data, interpretation of data is different and the sociological aspect and the psychological aspect of collecting and analyzing the data is different. And third, the medical practitioner data. Based on the different output of the disorders, the medical practitioner again takes a decision. He analyzes those data again. So what you see, there are three different domains, four different domains working together who are collecting the data by different approach of their own domain, analyzing by using their own methodology, coming with a common solution that we can come up with. That is again a teamwork for my This was the second example. Third up the key. This is the era of artificial intelligence. Without artificial intelligence, nothing can be solved out. We are having multiple intelligence. Multiple intelligence is speaking. Artificial intelligence ki techniques shall be, that is artificial general intelligence. So when I speak about artificial intelligence, Everybody is thinking computer science is good. Artificial intelligence, computer science is there, finished, nothing to do. But no, artificial intelligence is not only computer science. Agar aap Google me koi isi cheech ko search karte hain, ek baar, go baar, teen baar, aur chauthi baar, jaise hi aapne ek letter ko likha, ko pura ka pura aage aapke paas. That is artificial intelligence. The key is there. Aapne kuch likha bhi nahi, sari chijay aage. The intelligence is not artificially intelligent. How artificial intelligence plays an important role? Artificial intelligence has three important components. Three important components. First component, as a diagram of dekheng, in your lecture notes, artificial intelligence has system neuroscience. The first component. The second component is computational science. And the third one is human cognitive science. Three components of artificial intelligence. Basic components. System neuroscience, computational science, and human cognitive science. Now we come to one. That means artificial intelligence is not only computational science. But it takes into account, do see the word system neuroscience. When I speak about intelligence, brain, brain, our brain, only 5% is explained. black box. People do not know. What is there? Then five percent pay. आपने सोचा कि हमने लिखना और आप लिखना शुरू कर दिए। ये fastest thing. आप सोचते हैं और ये काम हो रहा है। You don't know that what is happening. आप सोच रहे हैं मुझे जाना उठ के चले गए। See how fast the action is there? You are sitting idle and you think that I have been right and you start writing. This is the function of the brain. Now, when I speak about artificial intelligence, then you only type certain letter, it comes into picture. 
in your web search. In your search engine, it automatically comes. So it speaks about system neuroscience. System neuroscience has different components. The first component is neuroengineering, just like brain. So the brain, in fact, has different way of thinking. The mind may alag alag chijon ko sochne ki alag alag tarike. When you think something, when you do something, it is engineering in aspect. So neuroengineering is there. Artificial intelligence. When I'm speaking about system neuroscience, the neuroengineering is there. Whatever you think, it comes into picture. That is to be mapped. In your search engine in Google, आपके brain की mapping वहाँ पर हो रही है by identifying different critical parameters. So neuroengineering is there. Then comes behavioral neuroscience. What you are doing in search engine? Search engine में आप search करें कि मुझे इस तरह के जूते चाहिए, ऐसा जूता चाहिए। आपने search किया? What the search engine is doing? Please, इसको ध्यान से सुनिए। Search engine is studying your behavior. ये आदमी X है। कहाँ पर hacking होता है? मैं बता रहा हूँ। Where the hacking is there and how computers or the hackers understands your behavior? आदमी X है। मैंने इस IP address में ये sign किया। Everybody is having mobile, having their own IP address. वो आदमी दिन में क्या क्या काम करता है? He types हमको जूता चाहिए कपड़ा चाहिए ये सब कपड़ा चाहिए और वो उसकी बिहेवियर हर दो दिन में वो टाइप करता है वो फेसबुक में जा रहा है वो ट्विटर में जा रहा है वो अगर सोशल वर्कर है तो सोशल डिसिप्लिन को बहुत स्टडी कर रहा है कहाँ पर क्या क्या घटनाएं घट रही हैं हर आदमी अपनी बिहेवियर के हिसाब से सर्च इंजन में वो सर्च and computer stores those into the system. And then the computer is able to understand your behavior. Ye admi is tarike ka hai, jo pichle ek mahine se, he is searching all these type of critical parameters. Therefore, this person is sociologist in nature, or he is technologist, or he is criminal. So, what this behavior is said to be? This behavior is said to be. Behavioral neuroscience. Artificial intelligence को छोटी चीज नहीं। वो पहले आपका neuroengineering किया। आपके सोचने की क्षमता कहाँ तक है उसको study किया। Medical science में। आपकी behavior क्या है? What is your psychology? He studies that, and then it is behavioral neuroscience. Then cognitive neuroscience. If you see the picture there, the blue one. That is cognitive neuroscience. Top one, top left. Nile mein, jo bai or sabse niche. Cognitive neuroscience. And the right one is computational neuroscience. Ki whatever you have thought, it calculates those thoughts. The data is large. The information is large. The parameters are large. And based on those such, is able to compute those things. This whole four, that is cognitive neuroscience, behavioral neuroscience, neuroengineering, computational neuroscience, comes under system neuroscience. That is one component of artificial intelligence. The other component is human cognitive science. Abhi tak machine ki charcha kar rahe, ab aadmi ki charcha kar. Machine ye sab jaan kya. Na human cognitive science, neurobiology, ye aadmi hai. Na what he thinks, what he does, what he is in fact doing, all these aspects neurobiology. Means when you are going to develop a specific software, you see artificial intelligence technique. Then you have to understand the neurobiology aspect. Only writing a program and commit out of a solution that has used this technique 
without studying the biological aspect, you cannot be an expert in artificial intelligence. That is the neurobiologist. Second, language science. Professor Jugal was speaking about language and literature. Language, he said, that it does not need to learn techniques or literature. Literature do not need to learn techniques. When there is love, when there is romance, when there is sorrow, when there is certain things, then what is happening? There is a change in the behavior of the person. There's a change in the psychology of the person. If you see Daffodil, he spoke about William's words. He says that he loves that, he laughs on it. And the same other poet on the Daffodil speaks something that is in sorrow. The same Daffodil is there, but it has changed the psychology. It has changed the behavior that how you are looking into that aspect. As a scientist, I will say that it had a lot of tools and techniques used. What tools? The tools is emotion. Emotion has different parameters. What parameters are there? What is the psychological behavior of that person? What is the geographical domain of that particular area? What is the philosophical thought of that person? And what he is feeling when he's observing that person? एक आदमी किसी एक चीज को देख के दस दृष्टिकोण दे सकता है तो वो चीज आखिर है क्या जिसपे दस दृष्टिकोण आ रही है तो देर फोर द टेक्निक इमोशन ऑफ दैट पर्सन ही इज गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड द साइकोलॉजी ऑफ दैट पर्सन ही इज गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड द बिहेवियर ऑफ दैट पर्सन ही इज गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड द फिलोसफी ऑफ दैट पर्सन टू द इमोशनल so language science plays an again important role as far as artificial intelligence is concerned that if it is from the asian country then you must know when you are developing a search engine you must know the aspect of the the different aspect of the philosophy of language then obviously philosophy comes into play not only philosophy but psychology as i told you that a poet x is laughing on the daffodils a poet y is crying on that daffodil the full psychology changes mujhe dekh ke kuch logon ko khushi ho sakti hai kuch log ro sakte hain aadmi to main hi hu lekin uski psychology hai ki meri behavior ko dekh ke और मेरे द्वारा बोली गई चीजों को देखे या तो वो गंभीर है या हंस रहा है या रो रहा है तो बीइंग एन आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस एक्सपर्ट यू मस्ट हैव अ डीप नॉलेज ऑफ ह्यूमन कॉग्नेटिव साइंस एंड ह्यूमन कॉग्नेटिव साइंस कॉम्प्रेस ऑफ न्यूरोबायोलॉजी लैंग्वेज साइंस फिलासफी साइकोलॉजी देन दर्ड कॉम्प्यूटेज कॉम्प्यूटेशनल साइंस the computational science is uh, comprises of many things what in fact is computational science the mathematics is there if you see natural science natural science comprises biology the biological sciences are there computer science is there applied mathematics is there and then effective computing is there so being an artificial intelligence expert you must be expert or if you are developing a search engine using artificial intelligence technique then you must take into consideration these different scientists together work out in coordination to get some fruitful result alone i am a mathematician i may know computer i may know biology i know some aspect of language but can i develop a search engine 
without taking into consideration the different critical parameters of those different domains which comprises the fundamental idea of artificial intelligence. That is multidisciplinary. So, when I speak about multi, and the way of collection of the data, the information is different, the interpretation is different, the analysis is different. A person of humanities may interpret a data in a different way. A technologist may interpret a data in a different way. The methodologies are different. The collection of the data methodology is different. A social scientist, a sociology person can collect a data in its one way. An economist can collect a data in a different way. And to analyze those data, he has a different methodological approach. So these scientists must come together, work on those data, collect those data, process those data by their own different methodological approach, work on a simple problem, work on a, not simple, work on a same problem, that complex problem to come out with a possible solution. And that in fact is research. Since this research consists of multidisciplinary nature, therefore it is multidisciplinary research. Now I come to business. Many of you are from management and commerce. So you will be interested in that area. So again, if you are a commerce person or a management person, and if you think that I in fact want to develop a specific product, then that particular product, how we are able to go on it. We have to come out with that particular product, the modeling of that particular a product is there in the market. That product has to be launched in the market. And what type of the business research you have? So first of all, that product must be sustainable in nature. When I speak sustainability of the product, then it is highly technological in aspect that must pass through the statistical quality control, SQC. It must go four sigma or six sigma. It must be competitive with the different aspects. It must be having a good economic analysis of that product. Suppose you are taking mobile, a new mobile comes into the market a new product is there and that particular product has to be launched then what type of business research you have to do it the first particular thing that sustainability should be there and the product what you have developed must be highly competitive in nature with the other products and that is what i am speaking that it should be competitive with other products that means the technology you have to take you have made a market survey. You have collected the information of what? If you see a country like India, a diversified country, where in different geographical domain, different aspects are there. The people in the far northeast, they have other demand. The people who are in the south, they have other demand. Those who are on the top of the uh, the northern side of India, there are different demands. Collecting the information of those particular zones, processing the data, processing that information by the own methodology. So, the product developments become very When you develop a product, then you have to take into picture the survey. And collecting the information itself is a big challenge. And then those data, those information, those parameters, what you have collected, there is mobile thousand models are available in the market. You are coming with thousand one. The thousand one mobile, when you are coming one with, then a lot of research on that. You have to develop a model. These parameters are influencing for making that product sustainable in nature, making that product 
more economic than the other, what is available, it needs a lot of money. Let's identify the problem. So statistical analysis, sociological aspect, geographical aspect, survey of collection of data, commerce is there, management is there. So what do you see? Economics is there, computation is there. So this is a mixture of everything. So new product which comes into market, again needs a lot of research on it with different type of the domains. And it is again a multidisciplinary. <laughs> now come to geography. Now this, now I take an example of the border dispute between Karnataka and Maharashtra. The border dispute, what is going on? Now, a politician alone cannot solve up this. He has to take help of whom? Karnataka is a different zone. Maharashtra is a different way. So when they are different in nature, then their culture is different. The Kannad people have their own culture. The Marathis have their own culture. That means you have to understand the sociological behavior of the person residing in these two states. Sociology comes into it. <coughs> Not only that, when I speak, as far as the language angle is con concerned, the people of Karnataka speaking Karnat, Maharashtra people, Maharati, and they have their own different way of their tribes. The person who are residing in that particular zone have their own way of living. They have their own language. They have their own tradition. That means anthropological study is important. So sociology, anthropology. Now Maharashtra and Karnataka, border is obviously political study is important. That what made the important, what made the dispute in nature, how political, because those different this uh, states have the different political uh, phenomena. They have different, Karnataka is having different type of approach. Maharashtra is having different type of approach. They have their own way of thinking. So political science comes into picture. And then the history of these two states. Different culture, different region, different history, both are traditionally rich. So a politician who wants to solve a problem of Karnataka and Maharashtra issue, he must take help from the sociologists, anthropologists, political science people, geography people, history. So when all these come together, and the way of collecting the information by an anthropologist is different by the way the economist or the political science people is collecting the data. He's processing the data in a different way. He is in fact using different methodologies for those data. And finally coming out with a particular solution. You have to clap this solution to come out with a solution for the population. The border dispute happens. To see again geography, if a person is geography, and if he says that I am geographist, I'm able to do this, you cannot. You must have knowledge of all, you must cooperate with the team members and come out with this. Now, transport geography. I'm speaking about the political dispute, is a transport geography. Now, just imagine example of Indian railways. Train moving from Kashmir to Kanyakumari and from Konkan to Tripura. No lakhs of people are traveling. <coughs> what in fact in the geography of transport you need? You need the information of the passengers. You need the information of the different type of flights, 
you need the information of the different type of travel mechanism the information you need for the passengers information you need for the flights information you need about the other aspects aap train mein survey kare ja rahe hain to aapki umar bhi puchta hai aapka naam bhi puchta hai aapka gender bhi puchta hai passenger ka information ho humne kashmir se kanyakumari jani hai to bahut sare train se bahut sare routes hai uski bhi jankari honi thi ek choti si cheez lagti thi ticket baithe ticket katwa liya ट्रेन पे सफर कर दिए लेकिन उस ट्रेन पे सफर करने के पीछे कितनी बड़ी रिसर्च है इट नीड सॉल्व द फर्स्ट थिंग इज इंजीनियरिंग रेलवे ट्रैक्स फॉर एग्जांपल आई टेकिंग इंजीनियरिंग ना द बुलेट ट्रेन आर कमिंग द ट्रेक्स हैज टू बी ट्रैक्स हैज टू बी मॉडर्नाइज्ड एज पर द टेक्नोलॉजी द स्पीड ऑफ द ट्रेन इज वेरी हाई मे बी 300 किलोमीटर पर आवर टुडे द ट्रेन इज मूविंग विद 100 150 किलोमीटर पर आवर सो इंजीनियरिंग एस्पेक्ट इज देयर the environment plays again an important role what environment that is plays into role i move that side up or side the environment that means you are moving from kashmir to kanyakumari now you are moving from a place of the northern side which is pretty cool in nature and you're moving towards kanyakumari crossing all the area of the cold region the moderate region and the hot region the environment is again playing role you must have the environment knowledge of it. when you are constructing a railway bridge or constructing railway track then whether the environment suit for construction of those type of thing is again important if a breaking a road in the region of leh very difficult if we are going to the thar desert making a road again is difficult so what type of environment is there we have to take into account the environment experts now mathematics and computer science we have identified the different parameter we have to develop the mathematical model based on those parameter analyze those data and then you have to simulate those information so again mathematics and computer science play when people travel they travel they take into account whether it's air or by road or on train so the economics play an important that what type of fear is there between here and here here and there the economics is there sociological demography is important the historical aspect is also important based on this we have made a plan policy obviously starts with technology technology engineering environment mathematics computer science economics sociology demography history planning and policy so what you see that even when you are making a time table for indian railways it's a big task in which decision science is there artificial intelligence is there and many more other things are there so when we speak about the transport geography of a transport system we have to take into consideration the domain of all these research these researchers of different domains must come together to come out with a solution for making it very very this is my thesis okay i will not go into the more of all these i am now we have done research and when we have written a paper a research paper for whom you have written a research paper the research paper is been written for the development of a society for some new innovations and that research paper must be read by most of the people so it must have certain impact the research impact should be there so the research impact can be defined as the global effect that research has on what society culture environment and economy and you only don't write a research paper 
when you write the research paper it has to be circulated so that many of them read that particular research and it is being evaluated based on the metrics what is there to calculate the metrics and you must have an impact of that research that what you have the innovative idea what you have given must be read by all of you aapne bada suna hoga kahawat jangal mein mor nacha kisne dekha jangal mein mor nach liya kisne to dekha nahi wo mor ko to sabko dekhna hai nacha to kaise nacha kya nacha aapne research paper likha aise journal mein publish kar diya jisko ki keval aap padhe ya aapka guide padha उसके बाद वो उनका जन्म बंद क्या फैक्ट है उसे तो कोई नहीं जान रहा तो आपने जो पढ़ा जो लिखा दैट मस्ट बी नोन टू द ग्लोबल कम्युनिटी पूरी दुनिया उसको जानना चाहिए तो कहा पब्लिश करें कैसे पब्लिश करें उसका इंपैक्ट कैसे हो ये सब चीजों पे आज हम लोग इस पर चर्चा करें is happening the next uh, one second please okay <laughs> back one second please oh shit One second, please. So, research impact. How you are able to get it? So, you must have citations for your work. Citation means that how many people have read your work. and how many people while working on your work has given proper weightage of your work when i am writing a paper i have read your paper and in the references i have given your name that means my work is being cited so therefore you must have the garnering citations are important secondly if you have written a paper and nobody has read it then it is a garbage kooda hai wo aapne paper ko likha jis journal mein aur aapke kaam ko na kisi ne padha aur na aapke kaam ko cite kiya wo kooda ho gaya ta avashyakta hai ki aapke kaam ko kin kin logon ne padha aur padhne ke baad aapke kaam ko unhone cite kiya ki nahi wo mahatvapurna और आपने किसी ऑडियंस को टारगेट करके अपने काम को लिखा है मैं काम कर रहा हूं मान लो साइबर क्राइम पर और मैं साइबर क्राइम पे काम करते हुए अपने काम को पब्लिश करता हूं तो हम किसके लिए लिख रहे हैं हम मैथमेटिशियन स्टैटिस्टिशियंस कंप्यूटर साइंस और जो साइबर क्राइम पे काम कर रहे हैं उन लोगों के लिए लिख रहे हैं अगर वो लोग ही मेरे काम को ना पढ़ेंगे ना मेरे काम को रेफर्ड करेंगे तो मेरा काम क्या है पूरा वो गार्बेज है सो द टारगेट ऑडियंस के ऑब्जेक्टिव के हिसाब से काम होना चाहिए कैसे हो तो आप जिस पेपर को लिख रहे हैं उसकी टाइटल प्रॉपर होनी चाहिए रिसर्च टाइटल इट मस्ट हैव अ प्रॉपर टाइटल आपने क्या काम किया उसकी समरी अच्छी होनी चाहिए एब्स्ट्रैक्ट द इंपॉर्टेंस द वर्क व्हाट यू हैव डन मस्ट बी रिफ्लेक्टेड इन द एब्स्ट्रैक्ट एंड इट मस्ट हैव गुड कीवर्ड्स कीवर्ड्स अगर आप पेपर लिखते हैं तीन चीज बहुत जरूरी है द टाइटल मस्ट बी क्लियरली रिफ्लेक्टेड देयर मस्ट बी प्रॉपर एब्स्ट्रैक्ट एंड द कीवर्ड्स शुड बी देयर राइट जर्नल चूज करें मैं काम करता हूं मैथमेटिक्स के लिए और अपने पेपर को पब्लिश कर दूं मैं मैं मेडिकल uh, साइंस के जर्नल में तो मेरे काम को कौन पढ़ेगा मैं काम कर रहा हूं इकोनॉमिक्स में और अपने काम को मैं इंग्लिश के जर्नल में पब्लिश कर दूंगा 
तो खुद को कौन पढ़ेगा तो चूजिंग रिसर्च जर्नल इज इंपॉर्टेंट यू मस्ट डिवोट टाइम फॉर चूजिंग जर्नल आजकल जमाना ओपन एक्सेस का हो गया है 2000 के पहले माने ये शताब्दी जब शुरू हुई तब अच्छे अच्छे जर्नल्स जो हैं वो चार्ज करने लग गए और आने वाले दिनों में 10 वर्षों 20 वर्षों के बाद ऐसा समय आएगा जब जो भी द रिसर्च पेपर यू आर पब्लिशिंग चार्ज फ्रॉम गुड जर्नल्स आज भी बहुत जो टॉप जर्नल्स हैं दे आर ऑल्सो चार्ज देफोर ओपन एक्सेस होता है तो आप अपने पेपर को कहा किस जर्नल में छापे वो जरूरी है चूसिंग राइट जर्नल जर्नल इंडेक्स्ड होना चाहिए इंडिया में यूजीसी ने निकाला है यूजीसी लिस्टेड जर्नल्स या वो लिस्टिंग में जर्नल्स होना चाहिए यदि ये वर्ल्ड बॉडी में जाते यूजीसी केयर लिस्ट ए केयर लिस्ट बी होता है केयर लिस्ट ए में मैक्सिमम इंडियन जर्नल्स है केयर लिस्ट बी में वो जर्नल्स है जिसको वर्ल्ड बॉडी रिकॉग्नाइज करता है जैसे आप साइंस के हैं तो आपकी जर्नल साइंस साइटेशन इंडेक्स होना चाहिए एस अगर सोशल साइंस के हैं तो एस एस सी आई सोशल साइंस साइटेशन इंडेक्स थॉमसन रिव्यूटर्स साइंटिफिक बॉडी है वर्ल्ड का जो इंडेक्सिंग करता है जर्नल्स को जिसको पूरी दुनिया मान खून का रंग लाल है सब जानता है लेकिन आपका खून ए प्लस है वो जांच होने के बाद होगा तो उसको एक इंडेक्सिंग मिली है तो जर्नल्स की भी इंडेक्सिंग लोग छाप देते हैं जहां मर्जी आए तो वही कहानी हो गई जंगल में मोर नाचा किसने देखा तो आपके जर्नल साइट इंडेक्स होनी चाहिए किससे इंडिया में है तो यूजीसी केयर लिस्ट एम और वर्ल्ड बॉडी में छाप रहे हैं तो आपको साइंस साइटेशन इंडेक्स सोशल साइंस साइटेशन इंडेक्स मेडिकल साइंस के हैं तो पब्लॉन्स में साइटेड होना चाहिए या स्कोपस इंडेक्स होना चाहिए स्कोपस इंडेक्स दो तरीके के हैं पेड और अनपेड आने वाले दस वर्षों में जो ट्रेंड चल रहा है तभी पेड हो जाएंगे तो ओपन एक्सेस मतलब आपने पेपर को सबमिट किया एक्सेप्ट हुआ इमीडिएटली इट गेट्स सर्कुलेटेड तुरंत सर्कुलेट हो गया मतलब आपके काम को दुनिया तुरंत देख रही तो सिलेक्शन ऑफ जर्नल इज इंपॉर्टेंट विच मस्ट बी इंडेक्सड and it must be strictly indexed in sci ssci publons scopus or if in india ugc care list journals minimum agar nahi hai to paper ko publish mat basically people are doing phd to only get the pay. to do phd get the degree wo degree ka kya fayda ki jo aapne kaam kiya us kaam ko koi padha hi nahi your papers must be published in good journals You must be cited. Citation का बोलूँ जब जर्नल अच्छा है, जिसको वर्ल्ड बॉडी रिकॉग्नाइज कर रहा है, और लोग उसको पढ़ेंगे, पूरी दुनिया पढ़ रही है, आपके काम को भी पढ़ेंगे, और आपको citation देता है। और citation के मापदंड का क्या तरीका है? वो H index और I10 index है, जिसकी चर्चा मैं बाद में करूँगा। आपने पेपर को publish कर दिया, पेपर accept हो गया, Scopus पे publish है, या SCI में है, या SSCI में है, या PubMed में है, या फिर UGC Care List में है, आपको भी मेहनत करनी होगी। आप केवल Facebook में trend list को मत पढ़ाएं। आपने जिस पेपर को publish किया, उसको social media में, Facebook में डालिए, WhatsApp में डालिए, Twitter में डालिए, जिससे कि वो सब लोग जान सकें कि वो उसके इंटरेस्ट का होता है। I am just saying about how can you increase the research impact. You try to make the video abstracts to target digital media. There are certain publishers, just example, Science Direct, Springer. They say that once you publish your paper, give a video abstract. Publisher ही बोलता है. Springer में paper publish कीजिए, Taylor Francis में paper कीजिए, Wiley में कीजिए, या Science Direct में कीजिए, या I Triple E में कीजिए. So they say that make a video abstract. Once the publisher get the video abstract, they put it in the different social media. So that people understand that what you have done already, the PP, the whatever graphs or the pictures you are doing, do it in an animated graph should be there. You start blogging. केवल कहानियाँ लिखना नहीं, blogging करना शुरू करें, press release and conferences करें, आप publish का paper, that public paper deals with this, उसको press and media में, conferences में दे, जिससे कि maximum audience हो सके. This is very
वॉट बेसिकली इज अ रिसर्च इम्पैक्ट इतनी बातें मैंने रिसर्च के बारे के लिए इसकी इम्पैक्ट क्या है जूली बेले डिरेक्टर ऑफ रिसर्च इम्पैक्ट एट द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ लिंकन डिफाइंस रिसर्च इम्पैक्ट एज प्रूवेबल चेंज ऑफ रिसर्च इन द रियल वर्ल्ड आपने जो रिसर्च किया उसका इम्पैक्ट क्या है वेरी सिंपल वे द डिरेक्टर ऑफ द रिसर्च इम्पैक्ट ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ लिंकन सेज दैट प्रूवेबल चेंज ऑफ रिसर्च इन द रियल वर्ल्ड इज द रियल इम्पैक्ट दैट इज वॉट द रिसर्च इम्पैक्ट इज हाउ यू विल बी एबल टू हैव इम्पैक्ट ऑफ द रिसर्च first understanding and awareness that means the problem what you have to take on and what you are going to do for the others you must try to understand and you must aware the people that i have taken this problem and this problem is going to be solved through this methodology attitude that means your research must help to lead to change the attitude attitude of what not the human behavior but the attitude of the scientist the attitude of the fundamental concepts what are you develop the attitude of the other workers what they have done this is a change what is going on economic that means your research should be in that way so that it must be cost effective or you must get enough research funding for it you must be able to generate revenue for it suppose you have developed a patent once you develop a patent of your work then you get some monetary benefit so therefore there should be economic for that environmental that means the research what you are doing it must arises for what for the conservation of the ecosystem aap jo bhi kaam kare bade simple bhasha mein dr kanaiya ne kaha देखिए कभी कभी लोगों को लगता है कुछ कहते नहीं लेकिन बड़ी बातें बहुत छोटी सी चीजों में करते करते इन्होंने कहा कि रिसर्च ऐसी होनी चाहिए जो संस्कार संस्कृति और जमीन जंगल जल को बचाए एंड दैट इज व्हाट द टेन पॉइंट ऑफ द रिसर्च इम्पैक्ट इज यहाँ पर रिसर्च ऐसा होना चाहिए कि एनवायरमेंट उससे बेनिफिट हो इकोनॉमिक हो उसका एटीट्यूड भी चेंज होनी चाहिए अवेयरनेस होनी चाहिए आपके रिसर्च के द्वारा हेल्थ एंड वेलबींग होनी चाहिए दैट इज वॉट द रिसर्च इज इट शुड बी डेवलप्ड अ पॉलिसी आपने कुछ ऐसा काम किया जिससे कि प्लानिंग एंड पॉलिसी डिपार्टमेंट फ्रेम साउट विद पॉलिसी ऑफ इट और रिसर्च इंपैक्ट क्यों जरूरी है a focus on impact then helps us ensure the best possible return from the investment that we as a society are making yahi tarika hai ab hum research impact how we are able to achieve the research impact so research mobilization is important aap mobilize kare research mobilization honi chahiye और कौन कौन से चीजों को रिसर्च मोबिलाइजेशन होनी चाहिए तो इफ यू सी द पिक्चर फर्स्ट इज दैट इट शुड बी रीच्ड रीच्ड मींस दैट सॉरी 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 दैट दैट मींस व्हाट द वर्क यू हैव डन it must reach the audience target audience it must reach the target audience and when it has reached the target audience when it will reach the target audience that the discovery what you have done or the audience what you are going to reach that must be discovered for the discovery what you have done हमने जो काम किया वो काम किसके पास जाना चाहिए इसकी डिस्कवरी होनी चाहिए द थिंग वॉट यू डिस्कवर्ड मस्ट बी गो मस्ट गो टू द रिसर्च ऑडियंस एंड डिस्कवरिंग दैट रिसर्च ऑडियंस इज ऑल्सो इम्पोर्टेंट हम माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स में काम कर रहे हैं 
तो मेरा ऑडियंस माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स में कहा है उसकी भी डिस्कवरी करना मेरा काम और तब जब मैंने वो काम किया पब्लिश हो गया एस जर्नल में हो गया तो उनके पास वो काम कैसे चला जाए जिससे कि आपके द्वारा किए गए रिसर्च का मैक्सिमम बेनिफिट उनको हो ये जरूर यू मस्ट बी एबल टू कनेक्ट दे यू मस्ट बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट मीन्स इंगेजमेंट इज इंपॉर्टेंट एंड व्हेन द इंगेजमेंट इज देयर देन देर इज अ चेंज एंड द चेंज यू ट्राई टू अप्लाई दैट and then you will give it to get the impact otherwise not i was speaking about h index and i gen index so when i speak that this must have oh sorry sorry again sorry again i have सॉरी सॉरी वन सेकेंड सो योर वर्क शुड हैव मोर इम्पैक्ट एंड यस द एच इंडेक्स एंड आई टेन इंडेक्स बिफोर आई कम टू H index and I ten index. I must try to say something on that. All the researchers, established researcher or the new researchers, they must have an author ID of Scopus. Scopus author ID is free. Everybody must register on Scopus author ID. everybody must have a google scholar profile everyone must have orcid account o r c i d orcid account everyone must have so a researcher must have a researcher id must have a scopus author id must have a google scholar profile must have an orcid account all the established journals these days if you don't have a orcid account then you to generate it and then accordingly we will able to submit the paper so these four things every researcher must have which are free available you have to log in there you have to register there orcid o r c i d scopus author id researcher id these all everybody must have what is the h index so if you see the left picture there is written h index 21 this is i10 index 48 how you are able to calculate it? this is my profile i have h index 21 and i10 index 48 h index is the number of publications with a citation number greater than or equal to h that means if you have 15 publications and it is cited 15 times Then your H index is fifty. If you have published two paper and it is cited two times, each of them two two, then your H index is two. If my H index is twenty one, that means twenty one of my research papers are being cited twenty one times. And if you see my total number of citations, it is now it has uh, flowing coming close to. it has crossed 2500 now means 2500 people have cited my work why they have cited because it is been published in journals of high reputation so h index is what the number of times people have cited your research paper is your h index so for i was speaking about research impact and then you will be identified as a researcher people will be able to know that you have done certain work and what is i10 index i10 index is the number of publication with at least 10 citations agar aapne koi kaam kiya ho aur kisi paper ka kam se kam 10 bar kisi 
व्यक्ति ने आपके काम को साइट किया है तो उसका आइटम इंडेक्स वन हुआ अगर नौ बार किया तो नहीं दस बार किसी काम को आपके पेपर को किसी ने साइट किया आइटम इंडेक्स हो गया था तो अड़तालीस आइटम इंडेक्स है मतलब कि ये अड़तालीस पेपर को कम से कम दस लोगों ने साइट किया हर एक को दस दस कम से कम दस से ज्यादा भी तो ये आईटेन इंडेक्स एन एच इंडेक्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द रिसर्चर्स और ये कैसे होगा तो आप गूगल स्कॉलर प्रोफाइल बनाए आपका कोई भी पेपर अगर इंडेक्स्ड जर्नल में छपा है तो गूगल अपने आप उसको अपने स्कॉलर में दे देता है यू मस्ट हैव अ गूगल स्कॉलर प्रोफाइल यू मस्ट हैव ऑर्सिड अकाउंट यू मस्ट हैव अ स्कोपस अकाउंट यू मस्ट हैव ऑथर आई डीज एक्सेप्टर सो दिस वॉज अबाउट एच इंडेक्स एंड आई टेन इंडेक्स एंड वेल सेड In nineteen hundred and thirty-seven, by the Nobel laureate of medicine, Albert Sand Yorgi, he said that research is seeing what everybody else has seen and thinking what nobody else has thought. जो सब देख रहे हैं, वो मैं भी देख रहा हूँ. और जो मैं सोच रहा हूं वो किसी ने नहीं सोचा नहीं सोचा तो थैंक यू सो मच इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेरी देन यू मे आस्क बोथ ऑनलाइन एंड ऑफलाइन सो दैट वाज टू डेज लेक्चर ऑन इफ यू हैव एनी कम टू दिन so we can address your queries that was a general talk on multidisciplinary research coming days we will be having different researchers working in different domains speaking on the methodologies of their work so we have technologists people from birla institute of technology ranchi the university people that means we will be having science people technology people social scientists humanities people who are working in that area so if you are able if you have any queries then you may ask and if you do not have any query then we may come to the conclusion of this session tomorrow session will begin at 10 am and will end at 6 pm there is one change in the evening session we have an online lecture of professor c b gupta of bits pilani rajasthan so if you have any query everybody is invited you may ask certain questions the whole screen <laughs> so i do hope so that none of you have any query and excuse me sir yeah please i have one question sir pardon please so when i'm creating a google scholar account yeah. then one field uh, one information is given means a university id yeah. uh, sir it is possible for any google means any scholar to fill this area because this area uh i yeah, did not have to be authenticated by the university or the institute what you do you have been affiliated with this yes, but this is the confidential for university not shared by no uh, shared for not research shared scholars. by anyone in is university id means university is providing you the email id id means uh -huh. 
email id and then also at the rate vivu.ac.in yes. if you are a vivu student vinoba bhave student then you yes. must have a university email id then it will be authenticated by that personal email id are not being authenticated by google profile by google scholar okay, okay thank you sir so the researchers are requested to get their uh, user id email id from the university okay thank you sir anyone else uh, sir one more question may i know who is speaking uh, sir i am malti malti kumari research you know about university yes, okay. uh, sir uh, Uh, you said that uh, you know, create a Scopus ID and Orchid ID. Uh, so the Scopus ID also uh, asked for user ID and password. Yeah, but, user uh, ID. If I'm correcting user ID, ID, then how? If you have your Gmail, your Yahoo ID, it can be done by that. It is uh, not. So user a, ID means any institute or university can also ask for password. So the password is not shareable. You register. You register first. Yes. Of all. Yes, sir. I'm trying to register, sir. Yeah, you first try to understand what I'm saying. That you first of all register. You create your own user ID and password. Okay, and sir. then once you are registered, then in login they ask you that user ID and password. It is not for Scopus and Orchid or any other that need university email account. Your Gmail, Yahoo account will work. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. I will try, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Anyone else? Okay, thank you so much for this first session, and I hope that in the coming sessions we will be having more fruitful input of the different research domain. Tomorrow we have four lecture from the technology side. Thank you, one and all. Thank you sir. Thank you.